Before I can talk about PyPy, I need to talk about two things. One is, what is Python? Python is, is a syntax, or two, or three, or six. Python is an interpreter that runs that syntax and can make that syntax run on your computer. Python is also a set of standard libraries that are shipped with the, uh, with the interpreter. And Python, more than anything else, is a very vibrant community that shares code and uh, helps each other learn the language. And the other thing we need to talk about before we can talk about PyPy is, what do you do if you want your Python code to run fast? OK, so you could write better code. One of the first things you could do is do string concatenation rather than doing, um, rather than doing string co co concatenation one at a time. Do it all at, at one big uh, fell swoop with join. Or you can do attribute lookup. You can take attributes out of your loop and put them at the head of the, of the function so that your attribute lookup goes a lot faster. But what if that's not enough? Then you could rewrite your code in C, which is kind of painful. You could rewrite your code in Cython, which is a much slower way to, uh, to move your code over from Python to C. And hopefully someone's going to talk about that later, maybe today or tomorrow. You can use accelerators like Numba that uh, Travis so, spoke so well about. Or you could just use PyPy. So now that we have a motivation and we know what Python is, we can talk a bit about PyPy. PyPy is an interpreter. Okay, It's the second stage in the, in the Python language uh, family. It's an interpreter written in, a, in something called RPython, which is a restricted set of Python. This means that the interpreter has to be then compiled down into C. Um, it ships with the standard library. Right now we're shipping Python 2.7.10, and we hope to be shipping PyPy 3.3 as, as an alternative uh, later this month. And speed is one of its main advantages. It's basically compatible with uh, everything that Python 2.7 does. The way that you uh, add things onto PyPy is through pip install, so virtual environment is a good thing to use with PyPy. But it's not the only alternative interpreter. There are a number of other alternative interpreters. I'm not going to talk about them. I'm only going to talk about PyPy. This, um, this is our speed graph of PyPy versus uh, CPython. CPython 2.7.2, which is actually the fastest of the CPython 2.7 uh, series. If we clock that out at 1 on our benchmark suite, we're up to now about 7.5 times faster than CPython on a set of, um, takes about eight hours to run our whole benchmark suite across the, the Python uh, uh, ecosystem. So most of those are non-numeric benchmarks, a lot to do with uh, web-based uh, applications, which is where PyPy really shines. We do also have some uh, anecdotal data about how fast PyPy is on real-world applications. There's a there's a HDL compiler called MyHDL that, that when you simulate HDL with PyPy rather than with CPython, it's about a 10, to 10 to 50 times faster on a lot of their uh, simulations. And we have some other anecdotal data from, uh, from the real world that shows that in general, in, in the real world, when you actually get out there and do something with PyPy, it can be around 10 times faster. But uh, Benchmarking and statistics and politics they all really lend themselves to a lot of lies. So the best way to benchmark something is to benchmark it yourself, to run it on your code in your particular situation. And uh, did I mention warm-up time? Those benchmarks are without the warm-up time. Um, and I'll, I'll uh, explain now what warm-up time has to do, if I can explain a bit about how, Python, how PyPy actually works underneath the hood. PyPy has a, has a tracing just-in-time compiler, so it optimizes loops. As you run your code, it traces each iteration of the loop and says, OK, you started this loop with two floats and an int. Next time through, you started it again with two floats and an int. Next time through, you started with a string. Hmm, OK, so we'll write that on another, on another list. And then the next time through again, you started with two floats and an int. And once we've gotten uh, about 1,000 runs through the loop, we'll say, well, that looks like a hot spot in your code. And we will uh, produce a linear trace of the execution of that loop and optimize and compile it into assembler. 
And the next time that loop is called, just like Travis explained with Numba, uh, that loop will be called with the assembler code rather than with the, um, with the, uh, Py -Py with the Python bytecode. So why is this fast? It's fast, first of all, because it's assembler and not bytecode. But we can, do another, we can do a number of other tricks as well as we're inlining, as we're uh, compiling the code down to assembler. We can inline the code. We can, uh, um, we can take other functions that are called from within your loop and, and put them into the, into the hot loop. We can do promotion. We can take variables that are um, neither assigned to but only read from and we can boost them outside the loop so that we don't actually have to um, do that read every time through the loop. We can do loop unrolling, which is that we can take four iterations of the loop and make them four calls through code, which then enables the CPU to pipeline that a lot faster. And we also have some strategies because we know we're running Python code. So we have a strategy that, for instance, converts sequences to arrays. We unbox the, uh, the variables, okay? Every variable in Python, because it's, it can be either an int or a float or an object, is put into a box. We can take the variable out of the box and, and create an array. If we know that every um, variable in that, in that array is an int, we can just create a, a, a set of uh, ints in, a, in an array, much like NumPy does itself. So we can automatically do that when we see the, those uh, sequences in, in the uh, bytecode. And we can also do SSE or AVX vectorization or NEON on ARM. That's something that was added in uh, Google Summer of Code last summer. One of the more difficult things to do with, with Python code is when you're trying to optimize it is to profile it. We have our own profiler that we've developed called VM Pro, uh, VMProf. It's a profile that does statistical profiling rather than stopping the world at the entrance to each function and, and recording uh, what's going on at, the, at, that, at that point in time. We just statistically sample what's going on in, in the code. Um, that uh, lens, that, that uh, method of profiling then doesn't bother the JIT. It doesn't stop the JIT from uh, actually jitting the code and, and uh, we get more uh, reliable profiling from that. And we have ways of viewing what the JIT has done. So you can run your Python code, your PyPy code, with a, with a log. So it will write out a whole lot of information to a log. And then you can view what has been jitted and what, uh, what, uh, what still needs to be jitted and what is slow in the JIT. We consider things that run slower than CPython um, bugs. And so we like to get reports from people that They've got a piece of code that runs slower than CPython on PyPy, and then we can use our, the JIT viewer and we can use our profiling tools to find out why the JIT hasn't been able to optimize that code. And the whole uh, justification of PyPy is let us do the hard work for you. All you have to do is take our interpreter and use it instead of the regular CPython interpreter. Um, you're, you don't have to add any kind of hints or any kind of labels to your code to make it run fast. Why not PyPy? Okay, so far I've said that PyPy is such a great thing. Why isn't everybody using it? PyPy, uh, if I talked about Python having four um, different circles of, of uh, participation in it, the circle we're missing is Python in the community. The third-party code, a lot of third-party libraries are written in C or using the, C API, the Python C API and they don't work so well on PyPy, or PyPy can't even optimize them because they're already written in C. And one other thing we're missing is we don't have an easy to use package of, of uh, PyPy like WinPython or Anaconda, which is a wonderful product, which uh, may be an opportunity for someone sitting here in the room if someone wants to put together a package of PyPy with a commonly used um, uh, third-party pack, third-party libraries. So we have a couple of stories for PyPy and third-party libraries. Um, the, the most popular one is to use CFFI to call out to C functions. This is a library written by Armin Rego and uh, Magic Fijalkowski, who are two of the main, other main developers of PyPy. CFFI is very easy to use. You just have to massage your C headers if you have C code, and then call out to your DLL, and that's it. 
Um, you can use CFFI also to call back into Python from C, and you can use it to embed Python and PyPy in a C application, much as micro WSGI does. It's very fast on PyPy. This is the reason we wrote it in the first place. Um, the interface between C and Python using CFFI can be optimized through the JIT. And it's fast enough on C Python. It uses C types underneath, um, for those of you who know what C types is. Um, it's a very easy way to call out from Python to um, third-party DLL libraries. We would be very happy if a lot more of the community would adopt it. We think it's a, a great thing. Not everyone is going to rewrite all of their code in CFFI. Some people will use the C API, and some people will still, are still stuck with C types. C types works on PyPy. It works a bit slower. But the big, the big um, elephant in the room, as far as PyPy is concerned, is the C API. C API is a way to call um, Python, C Python functions from C. Um, and we're actively working on it right now. It's what the PyPy team is uh, trying to improve right now. What's the problem with the Python C API is it leaks way too many implementation details. It leaks ref counting details, which ref counting is the garbage collector in C Python, and it leaks pi object structure fields. So if you think you just have some pi object that's a closed thing, it's very open because this is C. This in C doesn't hide anything. C also allows you to cheat. Um, nothing is private in C, and there is no such thing as a read-only field in C, so there are some third-party libraries, including NumPy, who write to uh, C-level fields without going through the C API. This makes it really hard to improve Python. This is a, not only a problem for PyPy, it's a problem for C Python as well, because it's a, actually a second syntax. The C API is a second syntax that Python has to support, in, in addition to the regular um, syntax that you write in a PY file. We now have to support this whole set of functions that, um, that have to be able to be called from C code. PyPy 5.0, which was released about three weeks ago, um, introduced a major rewrite of our C API layer. We now have a very efficient way, as efficient as we can make it, of calling from Py objects on the C side into interpreter objects on the PyPy side. And to synchronize those objects. And good things are coming because we have this, now we have this better infrastructure, and I'll talk about what good things are coming toward the end of the slides. But first, I'd like to talk a little bit about NumPy. NumPy is probably the biggest um, stumbling block right now in the, in the PyPy ecosystem. It's, uh, we have our own fork of NumPy that you can install into PyPy. And I've been working on that for about the past five years, together with many others. It's my Sudoku, what I do at night when I can't sleep, as I spend some time um, trying to improve the NumPy layer in, in PyPy. What we've done is we've replaced the ND array, the, the actual object that represents an array in Python, and we've replaced UMath with built-in modules. So when you get PyPy, you already have the ND array and UMath modules. You don't have to install them. They come built in. So what's in, the, in this repository up here, this fork of NumPy, is basically NumPy without the um, ND array and UMath modules. About 85% of the NumPy tests are passing on all platforms, because whatever platform PyPy runs on, our NumPy also runs on it. So we support ARM and PowerPC and uh, SX, S390X from IBM, and as well as X64. Uh, Most of NumPy is there. We've got ufunks. We've got object dtypes. You can create record arrays. You can create uh, your own ufunks. We support the more difficult parts of NumPy, the parts that make NumPy really fast, which is the linalg, FFT, and random modules within NumPy. We support all of them via CFFI. We took the regular NumPy code and we just added a CFFI layer on top of it. Um, this, if anyone's ever used NumPy and tried to move it to a different machine that had different libraries on it, they might have run into the problem that they have a different laypack or BLAST uh, support layer in there on that distribution. Because we support 
um, Lin Elg through CFFI, we can, sh we can switch those in and out very quickly without any big problem. It should be as fast as NumPy, and it's actually faster on smaller arrays because um, we don't have to go through the, C, the Python to C transition when we're accessing a NumPy array. It's actually built into PyPy. So the top row shows a number of vector addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, um, where, the, where the blue line is uh, NumPy pi and the red line is NumPy. You can't really see the scales at the bottom, but until we get to around 100, length 100 vector, um, NumPy, uh, PyPy is actually faster than NumPy, even though NumPy has been highly optimized and written in C. It depends on what function you're using, of course, and our matrix operations, which are in the lower, in the, in the second row, a 2D matrix, we're a bit slower. Even, we, we start off about the same, but we very quickly get slower because our iterator, our two-dimensional iterator, is not as good as going through a, a 2D loop in, in C. So that's NumPy, uh, NumPy Pi. What else can we do with NumPy Pi? We had a lazy evaluation where you, if you do A plus B plus C, you don't have to create a temporary A plus B in order to add in the C, much like uh, NumEx NumExper does. Um, we had that built in. We pulled it out at some point uh, because it interfered with some other optimizations we were doing, but we could easily put it back in. But that's probably not enough for most people. Most people want us to run the full uh, scientific Python stack on PyPy in order to actually use it. So wouldn't it be great if we could extend our C extension compatibility, our C API compatibility, so that you could just use native NumPy and SciPy. Well, I'm here to tell you the future is now. We've, uh, we're working on a major upgrade to the C API. We've been, we've been able to use the upstream NumPy stack, to the up, upstream NumPy code uh, rep, repo, and we pass about 90% of their tests now, which is actually better than NumPy Pi just using the straight out C API to, uh, to call into to NumPy. You can download a nightly build of, of PyPy and try out this new, um, new toy. Uh, you can, we now have a GitHub PyPy NumPy fork in addition to the Bitbucket one that is the NumPy Pi fork. Um, and the next question we have is how to make it fast. So we have some ideas about how we're going to now leverage this, use the JIT and NumPyPy to handle, when you say in, in Python, when you say you have two uh, NumPy arrays and you say A plus B, we're going to be able to run that through the JIT and use our NumPyPy implementation to, uh, to run that code, rather than having to go through the C API in the first place. We're going to hijack the C API calls and uh, call into the JIT and NumPy Pi. One of the big advantages of PyPy is that it's written in R Python. This makes it so that you can actually um, understand, if you understand Python, you can understand PyPy. It takes a while. It's a pretty thick set of code. And there's a lot of layers to go through. But when you get down there and you look at a particular function, it's just Python. So it's pretty clear what's going on. It's pretty easy to read. It's not dense C. It's not uh, some type of macros that, that, uh, that reevaluate the C code as it's going. It has the advantages of a JIT, which I talked about before, including vectorization. And we can also leverage this for other dynamic languages. Everything that works in PyPy also works in PHP. There's a PHP app, um, uh, interpreter of, of uh, R Python. There's a, a couple of um, Lisp interpreters that are written in R Python. And anything that we improve the JIT and improve our uh, garbage collectors or improve our, our, uh, our other capabilities in, in R Python will automatic, automatically get leveraged for these other languages. You can get PyPy at pypy.org or from your favorite distribution. Um, I think it comes built in and you can download it in Ubuntu and uh, um, BSD, I'm not sure, um, has some support in BSD. You should use it in a virtual environment. Give us feedback at PyPy on RSC. We, with the STM project to eliminate the guild, we have a story for eliminating the guild from Python. We have a story. It's, it's a research project, and it's a research project that 
isn't very well supported, so it's kind of hard to work on. We have a doctoral student who's working on it now. It's called S, uh, the, the, the STM stands for Software Trans Transaction Memory. The idea is you will run a whole bunch of code in parallel, and then when it comes a point where that code has to meet up again, any of the transactions that happened in any of these branches can be rolled back and run again if any of the uh, if there's conflicts in the in the uh, in the in the result. Um, it's not making very fast progress, um, and it turns out that the GIL is not Python's biggest problem. So, you know, Travis was showing 1,200 times improvements on uh, on uh, pure Python code just running on the GPU. I think that. Python has a long way to go until the GIL becomes the GIL be becomes the uh, overriding issue in Python. Okay, so the question was, how can I help Python 3.5 get into PyPy? So anyone who's willing to uh, work on on PyPy and help us get 3.5 in, we're not really interested in it. We don't see a lot of the uh, clients who are who are willing to pay for work that that sometimes people are willing to pay for in, in Python. We don't see them pushing Python 3.5. We don't see them pushing Python 3 at all. But you know we're working on it. There's a lot of commits going on. There is a branch of, of PyPy, um, Py3k, and it's moving forward. And uh, we're hoping that if we can get some sponsorship, we can move it forward. And anyone who wants to is willing to uh, contribute code, that'd be great. The question is if we've used Kickstarter to try and uh, get some sponsorship for our Projects. We have two two uh, Kickstarter pro um, Kickstarter projects still going in in PyPy. We have the Py3k, which uh, people can contribute money to, and we also have one for the STM project. The NumPy one got funded about sixty or seventy percent, and we decided to pull it after three years because it wasn't getting enough contributions to justify keeping it on our website. But anyone who wants to contribute to PyPy is welcome to go to the pipi.org website and click on donate and uh, give us some money. Okay.